Hi, Professor Gromlin here. I have some introductory comments for new microbiology students. Working in a microbiology laboratory may be quite different than some of the other science labs you've been in. For example, while all science labs require safety training and compliance with safety rules, these become especially important in microbiology because on any given day you will be working with live microbes, chemicals, fire, gas, and expensive equipment. Each lab will have specific safety rules that you should be aware of and be sure to follow them for your safety as well as the safety of others. In addition to important safety rules, some of the items, the equipment, and procedures will be very different from other science labs. So let's start out by getting familiar with some of these items, such as culture medias and transfer tools, and some of the good practices that will be used throughout the course, such as how to use the Bunsen burner, handling cultures, proper labeling, and incubation techniques. I guess it should come as no surprise to you that microbes, such as bacteria, fungus, viruses, and protozoa, are grown in the microbiology lab. In microbiology educational labs, a variety of bacteria are almost always grown. Bacteria, like all other living things, have to have nutrients and the appropriate physical environment in order to grow. If you were working in a microbiology lab back in the 1800s, bacteria were grown on potato slices or on gelatin or in beef broth. In 1882, when Walter Hess was an assistant in Robert Koch's microbiology laboratory in Berlin, Germany, his wife Franny suggested that they use auger instead of potatoes or gelatin. Auger is a mixture of two polysaccharides. It comes from red algae and it's been used in Japanese cooking since at least the mid-1600s. Auger works really well in the lab because it's convenient melting point, it has good gel stability at incubator temperatures, and microbes don't digest it like they do gelatin or potatoes. Later in the same decade, Julius Petri, who was also an assistant in Koch's lab, designed the Petri dish. So with the development of auger and the Petri dish, growing microbes on solid media in the laboratory became much easier. Today, bacteria can be grown either in a liquid media, these are called broths, or on a solid media made of auger. In some labs, such as labs that are manufacturing products for pharmaceuticals, it's essential to know exact ingredients in the media, so they culture the microbes on chemically defined media. But for most general education labs, we use chemically complex media. That uses a basic component, such as soy, yeast, beef, or blood, to provide the nutrients the bacteria need to grow. Broth cultures are usually in tubes or flasks. Solid media is usually in petri dishes, plates, or tubes. The advantage of the tubes is that they conserve space, but you still want to maximize surface area for growth, so these tubes are slanted while the auger cools, hence they're called slants. Proper handling of plates include things like labeling plates on the bottom, it's standard practice to include your initials, the date, the initials of the microbe on the plate. Sometimes your instructor will specify other information too, perhaps your section number, the type of media, or where the sample is from. The reason we label on the bottom is because when more than one microbe is cultured on the plate at the same time, covers can get turned during incubation and that would lead to confusion. We always label around the outside edge. You want a clear view of your results without the ink obstructing your view. Be sure to spread microbes on the surface of the auger. Don't gouge into the auger. When you're transferring microbes to a new plate, the auger in the new plate should be sterile, so you need to minimize the time that the cover is off the plate. Every time the cover is off, environmental microbes can land on the auger and contaminate your culture. 
you have two options here. Many microbiologists think it's best to leave the plate on your work surface and tilt the cover up only enough to work in the plate. Others will lift the bottom of the plate to them, work quickly, and return the plate to the cover. The optimal word here is quickly. Don't just stand there with that auger exposed to the air. Plates get incubated upside down. The environment in the incubator is usually warm and humid. When plates are incubated with the cover up, condensation will form and drops will fall onto the surface of the auger, splattering the bacteria all over the place and really confusing your results. When you're working with test tubes, for stability, always have your tubes in a test tube rack. Just like petri dishes, you want to prevent air contaminants from landing in the media. The best way to do this with the tube is to hold them at a slant whenever the top is off. If you're working with a broth culture, always agitate the culture before you loosen the top to it. Microbes tend to settle in the broth cultures and agitation is needed to suspend them and get a good sample. To avoid contamination, tube tops should never be set down on the table. Loosen the top before you open it and then hold the cover in your pinky while the tube is open. Your instructor may ask you to flame the tops of your tubes when you open them and before you close them. Remember to do this quickly. You do not want to heat the glass. The purpose is just to incinerate any contaminants that may be on the rim of the tube. If cotton or foam is used to stopper the tubes, this is a really important step. But if twist-on caps are used, this step may not be necessary, although it certainly doesn't hurt. When you're ready to incubate your tubes, tighten the cap and then go back one turn so that the cap is secured but not cranked on tight. This allows some air in. The exception to that is when you are working with anaerobic bacteria. Some labs use sterile disposable plastic needles or loops or sterile swabs to move bacteria between media. These are one-time use and then they're disposed of in the proper biohazard waste container. Most labs will use wire loops or needles. These need to be sterilized before, during, and after use. Many labs will use a Bunsen burner for that purpose. Be sure to adjust your Bunsen burner so that there's a nice inner blue cone of flame. The tip of that cone is the hottest part of the flame. Typically that's where you'll work to use your time most efficiently. Start by heating the wire near the handle and then move towards the tip. Be sure it's red hot. The reason that the loop or needle is moved from the end towards the tip is to prevent dispersing bacteria into the air. If you had a clump of bacteria on the tip and you insert it right into the hot part of that flame, the bacteria will dry very quickly and splatter all over into the air. After sterilizing that loop or needle, it will need to cool. It's really tempting to just blow on it or wave it around in the air to cool it, but don't do it. Those actions will just increase that risk of contamination. Well, hopefully that'll get you started. Those are some of the tools and techniques that you're going to be using throughout the course. They all take a little bit of getting used to, but before you know it, they will feel familiar to you. I really hope that you enjoy working in the microbiology lab just as much as I do.